But yeah, sure. Let, let's go with this line that Roy Johnson has that throwing your child into traffic or putting them in a school when there's a virus running loose that has killed not one kid under 14. That's exactly the same thing as throwing your kid in front of a moving car. Yep. Same thing. And you're a horrible, terrible person. You're a bad parent if you're willing to do that to them. This guy is absolutely insane. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. That was stupid. I know it was stupid. Really stupid. Hey, I just said it was stupid. <laughs> It actually gets even worse from AL.com. There's a article by Roy Johnson, and I got to say, I found this one quite amusing. If nothing else, just because of the way it starts out. So this is an article by Roy Johnson, who uh, is apparently very mad that Kyle Whitmire is trying to one-up him on the panic porn. He's, he's mad that Kyle Whitmire is doing a better job than him of scaring the pants off of everybody. And so he's trying to, uh, you know, they're constantly trying to out-liberal one another Roy Johnson and Kyle Whitmire over at AL.com. And uh, so he counters with this article, and I love the way it starts. It's, it's one of the funniest starts to an article I've ever seen. Children, that's what we're talking about here now. Children, your children. I'm going to give you a little advice here. Any article that starts out with something like that, you're pretty much guaranteed, maybe not always, but pretty much you can rest assured everything that follows that is utter crap. And the reason that I say that is, if you were going to lay out a rational case, uh, make some, some good, sound, logical arguments for why whatever view that you espouse is going to be important here, is, is going to be logically sound, you wouldn't have to start with a ridiculous emotional appeal. You know, yelling the word children, word children over and over again is not an effective argument. It's not an argument at all, actually. It's just trying to drum up people's emotions to prepare them for what is inevitably going to be something completely devoid of logic and nothing but emotional appeal. This is harsh to say, I know. Harsh to even insinuate any parent does not love their child and would not do any all and more to protect them against every danger, seen and unseen, against anything that might make their child ill might send them to a hospital in dire need of urgent care, might kill them. Yeah, what you just described there, that's actually a really bad parent. And it's very rare that I say anything about anybody's parenting being, you know, a bachelor without any kids. But the worst kind of parent is one that abandons his kids, or her kids as the case may be. The second worst is the helicopter parent. <laughs> The one that wants to protect their child from literally anything that can happen. Uh, Jordan Peterson talks an awful lot about this, that one of the most crippling things is making children so safe that they never adventure, they never go out and uh, are able to start understanding the wor world and understanding danger because of that, that they become so sheltered that they, they literally cease to function in society when they're out on their own. You have to invite at least a little bit of danger in there. And I'm not saying that you, uh, you know, intentionally put your kids in harm's way to where they'll get seriously injured or anything like that. But there does need to be an element of danger, an element of adventure, an element of, of charging forward there. But that doesn't even really apply to this because there's so little danger. And we just showed you, based on the charts, the death rates, the case rates, everything else, that the danger here is being so ridiculously overblown, it's not even funny. But my point is, what he's asserting there isn't even true in theory. Even if you take the, the context of what he's talking about out completely, being a parent that protects their child from every single danger, that's a terrible parent. And one that is going to raise a child that is dependent, needy, and incapable of, of functioning in a society. They just won't be able to do it. Because doing anything worthwhile incurs danger and risk. Obviously, some things do more so than others. Like, Working on an oil rig is significantly more risky than what I'm doing right now, but there is going to be some danger and risk in any activity that is worthwhile that a child can engage in. And so if you protect your kids from everything, you're actually crippling them. You're crippling them for life. And even though I'm not a parent, even I know enough to know that. Um, 
But the thing is, we've known that schools are not actually a major vector of disease since very early on. You may recall back in the summer that Europe opened their schools up. Even Europe that was tight, that was locked down tighter than a tick because they start school in the summer, which is not traditional in, in the United States, but like, I want to say it's like early July or something like that. They start the second term of the year. So they opened their schools back up in the summer. And you know what? Every single study, Ireland, other parts of the UK, Germany, France, every single one they did showed that schools were not a major vector of this disease. But if that's not good enough for you, if you want something more recent and you want something from American soil, you can go to this uber, uber conservative news publication. You may have heard of it. It's called the Washington Post, owned by Jeff Bezos. Super, super conservative, like not, not a liberal working there at all. Schools are not spreading COVID-19. This new data makes the case. And it goes into a lot of detail in this article, but I've included the data that they're going off of which on both cases, both when they're looking at elementary schools and they're looking at high schools and uh, high school staff, so the teachers there as well, their rate of having coronavirus infections is lower than the overall community rate. Now, it was a little higher in some of the age demographics for some of the school staff, but we have no way of proving if they actually got it from school or they just got it in general. But the overall message is, and this is the takeaway that the Washington Post takes away from it correctly, is that schools are not a major vector for this virus. It's just not. And in fact, they have lower rates than the communities that they reside in. And so it's just astounding to me that even uber liberal Washington Post, I mean, there's probably not a conservative that works there. Roy S. Johnson, who I'm sure would take that as a reliable source, would see that even back in November when that data was published, we knew that schools just were not a dangerous place. And so the idea that you're going to send your kids back to school unmasked, <gasps> yeah, it's really not a big deal. Even uber liberal, liberal sites and media publications have put this data out there, Roy. You know, all you got to do is read your own lefty colleagues at the Washington Post and they'll tell you, you don't really have to worry about schools, masked or unmasked. These things are not vectors for the disease. Now, the most ridiculous thing he says in this entire article, and this is a treat, is a little bit later on. We'll go ahead and look at this one. That's why the deafening roar of parents still vehemently fighting mask mandates in schools is so perplexing, so disheartening so infuriating. No parent would willfully throw their child into traffic, so why are so many blithingly willing to toss their kid into a space without the simplest protection against COVID-19, against especially its violent, contagious, bullying variant? Boy, you would think reading that this thing is airborne Ebola. Like, if there's a chance that somebody catches a whiff of the air another kid has breathed, that's it. 100% fatality rate. But schools, again, have been shown not to even cause cases. Even though the left loves to just look at cases and look at case rates, and that's their gold standard of whether or not we should be worried or not, regardless of whether or not it's actually killing people or increasing hospitalizations or causing bigger, uh, more potent cases, cases where people are getting more sick. They ignore all that crap and they just look at cases because cases seems to be the only thing that they care about, even though the others are actually much better measures of how effective we are doing against the coronavirus. But even if you just look at cases, that in and of itself destroys Johnson's uh, case right there. But he talks about it as though cases or not, even though we're not seeing an increase in cases in schools that once they get this thing, that it, it could kill them. Yeah, so could the flu. We don't shut down schools for that. In fact, far more kids die from the flu every year than coronavirus. And here's the other question that I could ask. He's saying that you don't really love your kids unless you're in favor of mandatory mask mandates. Not, not masking your own kid, just a blanket across the state saying every kid has to wear a mask in school. 
why not just mask your kid? If they're over 12, why not just get the vaccine? We have such a tendency to ignore personal responsibility in this day and age. And it's so sad because there used to be something empowering about being able to make your own decisions and, and protect yourself. And now it's like people don't even like that option. It's They want this community of agreement to where it's not enough for them to believe something and for them to take action on it. They want everybody else to go along with it because misery loves company. Why don't you just mask your own dang kid, tell him not to take his mask off and leave mine alone. And again, I say this is someone that doesn't have kids. I'm <laughs> just saying it from that perspective. But the thing that was so ridiculous about that, equating sending your kid into a school without a mask being the equivalent of throwing them into traffic. That, yeah, those are, those are the same thing. First of all, there's an obvious difference in negligence versus malice, right? Like we understand that there would be a, a pretty big difference in just negligence. In other words, being negligent in your duty to prevent, you know, attach a preventative measure to your kid. Again, I don't think the mask work. I think the data shows that over and over again. But assuming that it does, there is a huge difference in failing to take a precaution and actively trying to harm somebody. Those are two completely different things. So just on its surface, if you knew nothing about coronavirus, you knew nothing about the risk that it actually poses, it's a completely incorrect comparison just off that by itself. So logically, we've already destroyed Johnson's argument. But let's introduce that other element and pretend that that is not true for just a second to break it down another way. The risk is nowhere even close to the same. Now, granted, there's not really a statistic anywhere for the risk of throwing your child into traffic, but I imagine it's high, and that's the reason that Johnson is making that case. And so let's do some comparison here. So some Alabama coronavirus stats. Children in Alabama, that would be approximately 1.1 million. Deaths from COVID-19 ages 0 to 18. Four. Not 400, not 4,000, not 400,000, four in the entire state for the past 16, 18 months, however long ago January of 2020 was. That means their odds of death are 0 0.00036 percent or one in 277,700 and 77. That is astronomically low. It doesn't even register as a risk because of how tiny that number is. I mean, it's just ridiculous how much of a non-threat this is to people that would be school age. Oh, and if that wasn't good enough for you, let's go ahead and look at this one. This is from the CDC, which Roy Johnson loves so much. Now, I want you to look there. This breaks down the deaths in the state of Alabama by age groups, one to four years, zero, five to 14 years, also zero. So if you're under 18, there are only four people, which means that your risk is one in 277,777, which is insanely low. But if you're under the age of 14, we've literally not had a person die in the state of Alabama because of this. Now that doesn't mean it's impossible, but what it does mean is it's so rare that even after three spikes now, because we're in the third one, three spikes well over a year and 1.1 million people in Alabama under the age of 18, and we haven't had one person under 14 die from this, which I mean, I'm super grateful for, but doesn't that blow a massive hole in Roy Johnson's argument that if you're under the age of 14, we're making them wear a mask for something that literally not one single child in the entire state has died from? That's insanity. And what's even more insane is he's equating something that's that low risk, where the, the risk for if you're under the age of 14 is literally zero. That He's saying that that is exactly the same risk as you throwing your child into traffic. This guy's an absolute moron. I don't know how else to put it. I'm just dumbfounded by the level of stupidity. But yeah, sure. Let, let's go with this line that Roy Johnson has that throwing your child into traffic or putting them in a school when there's a virus running loose that has killed 
not one kid under 14. That's exactly the same thing as throwing your kid in front of a moving car. Yep, same thing. And you're a horrible, terrible person. You're a bad parent if you're willing to do that to them. This guy is absolutely insane. They're not really afraid of it. Now, the random person that's bought into the panic porn and really thinks that this virus is airborne Ebola, they're scared that you're not scared because they think that your lack of fear endangers them. The people at the top of this thing, they don't. They, they know it's a sham. They know it's, I mean, not that the virus is a sham, but the, the, the panic is so overblown and the threat level is a sham and it's all for show. They understand that part of it. The reason that they're scared that you're not scared is because they know your fear justifies their power. People that are afraid are easy to control. People that are terrified of something want a big person from the government to come in and solve their problems. And they have had a much easier time doing this. And if you think, well, those are just the liberals or the people that bought into this. Uh, I want you to think about this. Didn't they tell us that we couldn't go to church for several months this year, even in ruby red Alabama? You're more susceptible to it than you think. And I say this as somebody that obviously was never in favor of shutting down churches, but bought into it more than I thought I would. And so think about that. People that are afraid are easier to control. And that's exactly what they want. And that's why they're afraid that you are no longer afraid. And you shouldn't be. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.